This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Uh, this is the second lecture on Chapter 9, which you're looking at uh, uh, further aspects of discounted cash flow. In the last lecture, we dealt with capital rationing. In this lecture, we're looking at something called replacement. If I can just talk for a few minutes to explain what it is we're talking about. A good example is uh, of this is cars. Uh, many companies give cars to their employees. And of course, cars don't last forever. And so every so often, they have to buy new cars. They replace the car. So assume an employee needs a car for a long time, you know, effectively forever. We're going to replace it periodically. And how long should we wait before we give them a new one? You know, we're not going to wait till it just stops working completely. We may now decide to give them a new one every four years, let's say. But why not every three years? Why not every five years? And what we need to take into account is, if you think about it, with cars, the older a car gets, the more you're likely to have to pay uh, running costs, repairs and so on. And the older a car gets, the less you'll be able to sell it for when we come to change it. And so to save money, we might say, well, let's replace this car very often. If we replace, if we get a new car every year, we're keeping the running costs low. The repair bills aren't going to be expensive in the early years. And, of course, if we give them a new car every year, um, we'll get a high price when we come to sell it. The only downside, of course, is if you give them a new car every year, you're having to pay for the cost of a new one every year. You know, if you make them wait five years, you'll have to pay out the cost every five years. But that's the problem. Trying to decide, you see, we need the car effectively forever. How often shall we replace it? Shall we replace it every year, every two years, every three years, or whatever? Look at my example. This is a machine. A machine costs 72000 and has a maximum life of three years. The running costs each year are as follows. First year 7, 2, second year 9, 6, third year 12. The older it is, the more expensive it's costing to actually run it. The scrap values depends when we come to sell it. If we decide to sell after a year, we'll get 24,000. But if we wait two years, we'll only get 16,6. And if we wait three years, we'll only get 9,6. And our question, our problem is, how often should we replace it? Because again, the longer we wait, if we wait three years, the running costs get very high and we get a much lower scrap value. Or shall we replace every one year? The running costs will be a lot lower. The scrap value will be a lot higher, but we'll be having to spend the 72,000 a lot more often. Well, there's not really a quick way. We've no choice but to uh, cost each of them out. Uh, we're only concerned with the costs. We are going to assume that the revenue from the machine will be the same, whatever happens. You know, I might get revenue of 20,000 a year, however often I replace. All I'm concerned about is which would be the cheapest way of replacing, which would be the minimum cost. But well, we've no choice but to cost out each of the alternatives. I'm going to cost out replace every two years. When I've done that, although I will do every one year, every three year, this would be a good idea. When you've seen how we do it for every two years, it would be a good idea for you to have a go yourself, replacing every one year and every three years, and then check with the lecture. However, what are the cash flows if we replace every two years? There are two steps to it. Step one, we calculate 
the present value of the first machine. So, easy enough. What are the cash flows? Uh, if it's replaced every two years, the first machine will last two years. We've got the running costs. It's 7,200 in the first year, 9,600 in the third, the second year, sorry. We've got the original purchase price, 72,000 at time zero. And if we're keeping it two years, we'll scrap it, the sale proceeds, after two years. And if we've kept it two years, we'll get 16,600. And so the net cash flow each year, 72,700. Uh, 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 uh. An inflow of 7,000. Uh, to work out the present value, discount in the normal way. And it says the cost of capital is 15%. And so the discount factors for one year at 15%, 0.87. Uh, for two years, 0.756. And therefore, the present values, 72,000, 7,200, Five two nine two, uh, and watch the signs. You know, outflow, outflow, inflow. Remember, we're only looking at effectively the costs of this machine, because I want the cheapest cost. And so, what's the total present value of that first machine? Seventy two thousand. Seventy-two nine seven two. So, no problem there. That's the first machine, but of course, the minute we sell that machine, in two years' time, we'll be buying a new machine. And we assume the same cash flows keep getting repeated. Every time I buy a machine, it's effectively got a present value of 72. It's like paying 72,972 now, but it'd be like paying 72,972 again in two years' time, in four years' time, every two years forever. Well, I want to compare that with perhaps replacing every three years, but every three years, whatever the present value was, it'd be paying that out every three years. They're not comparable. How can you compare 72,000 every two years with, I don't know, maybe 80,000 every three years? We can't. So to make them comparable, step two, we calculate what we call the equivalent annual cost. Now here there is a formula which isn't given on the formula sheet, you are going to have to learn it. I hate writing formula without explaining but this is one time when I'll write the formula, <coughs> excuse me, we'll do the arithmetic but then afterwards I will, it'll be then easier then to explain why we have this formula. But the equivalent annual cost is the present value of the first machine divided by the annuity discount factor of 
for the replacement period. Now, obviously, I'll explain what I mean and put the numbers in for this one. But although this certainly isn't asked in every exam, uh, it always could be. And so to be safe, you'd better learn this. And what it is, is this. Um, remember, we're doing two-year replacement here. So the present value of the first machine is 72,972. I'm not going to put brackets around it because we're saying it's in, the brackets meant it was a cost. Well, we're going to calculate equivalent annual cost. I don't really need brackets. So 72,972 divided by the annuity discount factor for the replacement period. Well, here we're doing two-year replacement. So it's the two-year annuity discount factor at the cost of capital, which for this question is 15%. So two years at 15%, the factor the annuity is 1.626. And so the equivalent annual cost, 72972 divided by 1.626 is 44878. And we're saying, and I'll explain to you in one second, we're saying that this machine, with those cash flows in the question, replacing it every two years at 15% would be exactly the same as, in present value terms, as paying out 44,878 per year forever. Now, as I say, I will explain why. Um, I doubt you'd be asked to explain why in the exam, but it's awful to learn a formula just because it's there. I'm saying that the machine is like paying out 44,878 per year in one year, in two years, three years, four years, and so on, forever. Well, if I said to you, what's the present value of those two? It's an annuity. Just those two. 44 a year for two years. The present value, you'd multiply by the two-year annuity factor, which is 1.626. And it would give you a present value of 72,972. Those two years are effectively the same as 72,000 at time zero. What about the next two years? Well, surely, it's a two-year annuity. It just starts two years later. And if I multiply by the uh, annuity factor, we end up with 72,972 again. But because these are two years later, time three instead of one, time four instead of two, it's 72,000 two years later at time two. And similarly, the next two years would be like 72,972 at time four. Which is what we'd already said. That this machine, I said, was like paying out 72,972 every two years. All I've done is work backwards. Whoop, whoop. And said, well, effectively, it's like paying out 44,878 every year. And if we can do the same for a one-year and three-year replacement, we will be able to compare. This is 44,000 a year. If three-year replacement is 50,000 a year, this is cheaper, and so on. OK, well, there is no uh, quick way apart from costing them all out. And in fact, in recent years, in the ex when this has been asked in the exam, um, I think he's only had, had cost out two cycles. Here we're going to do three. I do really suggest you have a go yourself uh, before you watch the rest of this lecture. See what you get and check with me.
However, that's your choice. I'll carry on and I'll do three year replacement and then one year. So the two steps. First of all, the present value of the first machine. Well, this time we're keeping it for three years. So the running costs, 7.2 in the first year, 9.6 in the second, 12,000 in the third. Uh, the purchase price, 72,000 at time zero. And the scrap proceeds. If we're keeping it three years, we only scrap at time three and receive 9,600. So the net flows, 72,000, 7,200, 9,600, and a net, what is it? 2,400. Uh, the present values multiplied by the discount factors at 15%. Uh, bar, bar. For one year, 0 0.87. Two years, 0 0.756. 0 0.658. Oh dear, oh dear. And so the present value is 7200 times 0.8. Can't read my own writing. 70. 6264. 9600 times 0.756. 7258. Uh, and 2400.658. 1579, the total present value oh dear, sorry, press the wrong button 72,000 7279 87,101. However, that's step one, and remember, it's equivalent, therefore, to 87,000 every three years forever. The step two, to make it comparable, the equivalent annual cost. The present value of the first cycle, the first machine, it's three-year replacement, so divide by the three-year annuity factor at 15%, 2.283. It's therefore equivalent to 38.152 per annum forever. Well, before I compare, here I wanted to do three. It's every two year, every three years should be done, and every one year. So let's now finally do one year replacement. Won't take many seconds. Step one, the present value of the first machine. If we only keep it one year, We've got the running costs for the first year, 7,200. We've got the original cost times zero, 72,000. And we've got the scrap, the sale proceeds. If we're selling after one year, we get 24,000. So an outflow of 72. An inflow of, just checking, yes, 16,800. Uh, the discount factors at 15%. Um, for one year, 0.87. The present values, therefore, Uh, 
the total present value. Fifty-seven three eight four. Uh, so it's like going to be our fifty-seven three eight four uh, now in one year, in two year, and so on. However, we still need step two: the equivalent annual cost to get an equivalent amount every year from time one onwards. Uh, the present value of the first machine divided by the one year annuity factor at 15% gives us finally nine. Every year, one to infinity. All right, well, I hope my arithmetic is right, but now we can make the decision. The choice is to replace every year, which is like paying out 66,000 every year forever. Alternatively, every two years, like paying out 44,000 every, every year rather forever. Or replacing every three years which is like paying 38,000 every year forever. Um, any one of those could be the best, you know. In this particular case, the cheapest is 38,152, uh, uh, and therefore we will replace every three years. But I hope you agree there was no way of knowing in advance. We had to check all three, and any one of the three could have been the best. And so there we are. I mean, again, as always, it's time consuming, but once you've got it, it's not hard, it's just very repetitive. Uh, in the exam, as I've said, in all recent questions, it's not asked that often, but in every few exams it's asked, um, he's only had to do it for two, I think. Last time it was to do it for two years and three years, so it was that bit shorter, but which was the cheaper of the two. If you are asked to write about it, you know, what reservations would you have? Well, although you've all the normal reservations that we discussed in an earlier chapter, you know, the cash flows, the estimates, and all that sort of thing, uh, I think there are a couple of big extra reservations here. One is that we are assuming that we'll carry on replacing this machine forever. You know, what if I said we're only going to need a machine for six years? Well, you either replace every three years and just buy it twice, or you replace every two years and buy it three times, or you replace every year and buy it six times. Uh, but the answer could well be completely different if it's just over a six-year period. Here, we're assuming it, we, we carry on replacing forever. Uh, a second problem, perhaps a silly one, but still, um, what about replacing every two and a half years? That might be cheaper. We can't do it, and you'd never be asked to do it. But, you know, in real life, it might be a better option. Uh, a final problem a major problem, and a hugely important one, is of course we are assuming that as we replace, the cash flows keep repeating. That's very unlikely. I mean, think about a car. Same will apply to a machine, but if you think about a car, uh, over the years, cars have improved. Cars these days, the running costs tend to be a lot lower than they were 10 or 20 years ago. And the same thing happens in the future. Do you really think that, you know, in another 10 years, cars will still cost the same and have the same running costs and the same scrap values? I think it's very unlikely. And what's more, cars and machines become obsolete. You know, new models appear. 
Will we even be able to buy the same machine uh, in 10 years' time? Almost certainly in 10 years' time, a new machine will have replaced it, which could have completely different cash flows. So although it's perhaps a neat idea, it's got huge reservations um, from a practical point of view. Anyway, that was the second of the special techniques. There's one more, so the last lecture of this chapter will be on the third one, lease versus buy.